Hello and welcome to Mongoose JS Essentials. Learn MongoDB for Node.js. My name is Patrick and I will be guiding you throughout this course. In this course, you will learn to build a simple CRUD application for creating, reading, updating, and deleting data from our database. We'll be using MongooseJS to build a book schema and then perform actions on the schema to add, update, and delete our books. We'll be using Express.js to create routes that will form the basis for a RESTful API. We'll be using Postman to perform actions on the routes that we've created. And we'll use our browser to confirm that changes have been made. This is a beginner level course to help you get familiar with important concepts when learning to code in Node.js. Even though this isn't a flashy application, you will learn the essential building blocks that you will end up using over and over again in all future applications that you build using Node.js. Before beginning this course, you should already have Node.js installed as well as MongoDB. I have free videos on my YouTube channel, JS Wiz, along with a couple of free courses here on Udemy that can help get you caught up with the basics, including Express.js Fundamentals and MongoDB Essentials. So if you're ready to take the next step on your programming with Node.js journey, then join me today in this free and essential course on MongooseJS. This video will cover the basics of what Mongoose is and how we use it. Mongoose.js is a node module that makes it easy for us to interact with MongoDB. It provides us an abstraction in the form of an API for creating schemas and manipulating data. The schema creates key and value pairs for the different data types available to us within MongoDB. We'll be going over the Mongoose API in detail, and you can learn more now by checking out the documentation located at mongoosejs.com. So what does Mongoose do? Mongoose creates an easy to use object reference when interacting with MongoDB. And what makes Mongoose great is that our database gets modeled within our code. How do we use Mongoose? First, we require in the Mongoose module. Next, we set a variable reference to a Mongoose schema. And then we create our schema. Now, in order to use our schema in other files, we need to create an instance of the schema. And when using Mongoose, we call this instance a model. So now I can use the handy module.exports method given to me by Node. And now I'm able to use my new schema and other files simply by requiring this one. With the schema all set up, all we need to do now is establish a connection to MongoDB. And this is very simple. First, we create a variable assigned to our instance of the database. Now DB name can be anything that you want. It just represents the name of the database that we use. And then we just use mongoose.connect to connect to it. And just make sure that you always remember to have mongod running in your terminal. Otherwise, you'll get an error. Let's now build a mongoose schema. In a later video, we'll be digging into the mongoose API in more detail. But for now, we'll tackle the most used aspect of mongoose which is the creation and usage of schemas. You can find out more about building these schemas 
and using different data types on the Mongoose documents page. We'll start out by creating a file called book.model.js. So I'm going to navigate into an examples folder. Navigate into there. So we'll be building a book schema or model and you can think of a model as the basis of a database architecture. So each schema that we build will have this file name structure and I'll generally refer to either the model or the schema which can be used pretty interchangeably. So we'll start off by defining a couple variables. First we make sure that we require a mongoose. So we're going to be creating a book schema and a schema is a method that we get from mongoose. We're going to be exporting our model for usage in other files. So we can go ahead and do that now. We can say module.exports equals a mongoose model and we're going to name our schema book and we're going to pass in the name of our schema which we'll create now which is book schema. Okay, now we'll say book schema equals a new schema which again is a mongoose schema. There's two ways that we can set up our key value pair fields. We can either set them up directly like this. So this implicitly sets our data type to string or we can pass in an object for the data type it's always referenced as type. When I'm creating a schema I'll typically use the first method or way of defining our data types. However Mongoose gives us the ability to add in optional fields. So one kind of optional field is the required field that we can set to true or false. The default is set to false meaning that this field is required in order for this model to be saved. Another often used field is unique. You'll see this a lot of times used when someone is building up a schema that requires an email. So you want to make sure that the email that the user has submitted has only been used once. Here's another kind of optional field that's called default. So this is used in case a user hasn't inputted anything into the field or nothing has been generated, we can set a default key to make sure that something gets saved. You'll see this used a lot of the time with dates, setting a default to date.now, which makes sure that the date is being saved as an ISO date for right now. We can set the keywords as an array. Published can be a boolean, so it can be true or false, published or not. We can set the author as a type schema.objectID, which will reference another schema or model that we've created in another file. So we always need to have some kind of a reference, and we'll name the reference as the user. So when this model is saved, it will grab the reference of the user model and add it into this field. So if we were to reference our book model somewhere else, saying schema.objectID, we would use book as the reference. Sometimes you'll see the type as schema.type.objectID. Essentially it's the same thing, it's just an alternative way of saying schema.objectID. We can also add embedded subdocuments and embedded arrays. So an embedded subdocument would look something like this. So this would be something that you might see in an Amazon type store where underneath the details we're listing the book model number, whether or not it's a hardcover, the number of reviews, and the ranking within a category. The data within these subdocuments can be retrieved using dot notation. So in this example, we would display the object using something like 
data dot detail dot model number in order to retrieve that information. So in this video, we talked about the different data types that we can create within MongoDB, and we provide an example of what a Mongo schema might look like when we're creating these different models. In the next video, we'll see how we can use different find methods for retrieving data from a model. In the last video, we learned a little bit about Mongoose, including how to create schemas and set up a connection. In this lecture, we'll start using Mongoose along with Express and Node.js to query objects and to display results. So in this lecture, we're going to be building a mini app. We can start out by navigating into a folder where you want your application to be. So I'm going to copy this folder location into my terminal. I'm going to create a new directory and I'm going to call this mongoose ex. I'm going to cd into that folder. So now you can see the folder is created and I'm going to go into it. Now I'm going to create a couple of files for this folder. So I'm going to create an app.js file and I'm going to also create a model. So our model will be called book.model.js. It's very common to capitalize the name of your model. Now I'm going to create a package.json by using npm init. And I'm going to enter just anything into these. The entry point will look towards our app.js file. So if we open up our package.json, we can see it's pretty much empty, but it just gives us the initial scaffold. And I'm going to install three NPM modules for this project. And those modules that I install will show up in this package.json file. So we can say npm install dash dash save. And we'll be using express, mongoose, and body parser. Okay, and with those added, let's open up our app.js file. The first thing that I'm going to do is set up a very simple server and then test that it's running. So I set up an instance of Express using our app variable. And that will allow us to add routes and start our server. Body parser will allow us to grab elements from the front end as well as parameters within our URL. And of course I'll require mongoose. I'm going to assign a variable to our port and I'm going to name it 8080. So in order to access our server in a browser we'll navigate to localhost-8080. And to start our server all we have to do is say app.listen and pass in our port. I'm also going to add in a callback function to let us know that our server has been started. Okay, now I'm going to save this file and go into my node terminal and I will say node app which should fire up our server and we also get the message app listening on port 8080 so our server is working and it's listening on our port. Now the next thing that I want to do is create our book model schema. So remember we create a book.model.js file. The first thing that I'll do is require mongoose. The second thing that I'll do is create a variable for our mongoose schema. And just like in our example, I will create a book schema. I'm going to create three fields for our book schema, a title, an author and a category. And finally, I'm going to export our book model schema so that we can use it in other files. I'm going to save this file and now I'm going to require this file in my app.js file. 
the difference between requiring files in our app.js file and requiring node modules is that we have to specify the location so we're requiring in this book.mod.js file that's located in the same location as our app.js file is located with our schema created we can go on to creating a location for our database and connecting to that database using mongoose.connect so just like in our example I'm going to set a variable for a database and I'm going to keep on using the same database that we used in the previous example which is a database called example and below that I'm going to use mongoose.connect to open up our mongodb local instance and it will connect to this database example so now I'm going to save this file and I'm going to try to start our server again first I'll kill the server and then restart it by typing in node app and we'll see that we get an error thrown so it did start up our server but then we immediately got an error and then our server shut down so you'll always see the same kind of error whenever we forget to start our mongod instance so now if we go back and type in mongod it will start up our mongo server and now when we go back to restart our server it should work okay so we get the message listening on port 8080 without our error message and with mongod started we're also able to log into our shell So now we're logged into our shell and we have our server running. Let's use our example database and let's show collections in our example database. So one very interesting thing to note is the fact that books got automatically generated when we loaded up our node server, even though our schema is called book. So our schema is called book and once we started our server we automatically got a new collection named books and when we go to db.books.find it's empty so I can say db.books.find.pretty and it's still empty so there's nothing in there but it was automatically generated and what's most interesting is the fact that it's pluralized so whenever you're creating a schema mongodb will automatically pluralize the name of the schema that you create so at this point i'm going to insert three books into our books collection okay and these are the books that i'm going to insert and i'll provide to you this file you can just copy it over now Basically, I'm just going to copy this into our Mongo shell. So it's going to insert each one of these books into our books collection. It says write result one. So now if I say db.books.find.pretty, it should show these three books that I just added. And it does. So now we have three books that we can find and read and update. So now we're going to add a couple of routes for retrieving all of the books in our database and for retrieving just one book from our database that we define. In order to do that we'll be using express and we'll be using the app.get method I do have a free course on Express basics or fundamentals that you can watch to learn a little bit more about some of the stuff that we'll be talking about. But for now, it's, it's really easy to set up and use routes. What we need to do is specify the location where we want the route to be, and then we can pass in a callback, which takes a request and response object. 
request is anything that we get back from the user, such as when they're typing something into an input field and we want to get that. Response or res is what we give to the user. So we can say res.send and we can pass in a message. So here I'm just going to pass in a message so that when a user navigates to our index route location, they'll see this message, happy to be here. So now if I save this file, now I'm going to restart our app. Now if I navigate to localhost 8080, I should see this message. Okay, great. And I see the message, happy to be here. So that indicates to us that our express routing is working. So the first route that I'm going to create is going to get all the books from our database and display them on a web page in JSON format. So in order to do that, all I need to do is say book.find. So book.find will use our model that we've defined up above and then it will pass in the find method. Within find, we could pass in anything that we want. So we could specify with a name, with an ID. If we don't specify anything, meaning we just put in an empty object, we will get back everything that's within there. So if we take a look at Mongoose queries, we can see a couple of examples. Find one we'll be using in the next example. But below that, we have find you can see how they're passing in specifically what they're looking for. So occupation, age, they're limiting, they're sorting, and then finally they're calling execute, right? Execute with a callback. So that's what we're going to do. After we find all of the books, we're going to execute, say dot execute. And it's very standard to pass in two parameters, an error and the response of what we're getting. So what we're going to get back is a list of all the books. And this is basically a, a variable. So books could be results. It could be anything that you want. But we're going to call it books. Let me mess up. This is a callback, right? A callback that receives two parameters. And then first we're going to check if there's an error. So if there's an error, will respond by sending an error message has occurred. And if there isn't an error, that means that we were able to get back all of our books and we'll send a JSON response listing out all the books. And we'll also log the books in our console so that we can see them that way as well. So now when I navigate over to this route, which is going to be localhost 8080 slash books, I should get a JSON response with the three books that we've inserted, as well as a message in a console with the three books. So now if I save that and then restart our server, I have an error on 25. So this... Okay, app listening on port 8080. So now, if I go to localhost 8080 slash books, okay, look, now I get the printout of the three books that I've added. And let's also check our console, and we can also see that we get a log of the three books that were added. Okay, so that's what we were hoping for. Now I want to be able to retrieve one book in particular. So we can do that using the find one method that is a mongoose query that we saw right here. And for this one we'll be using body parser. So this is a very again a very standard way of passing around data is to use the parameters and the parameters is just what we find in here okay so we're going to pass in a colon dot id which will translate to something like this right 
And this is going to be this. It's going to be the object ID. Okay, so we're basically going to pass in the object ID right here. So when I navigate here, it's going to give me back this specific book the ID, the title, the author, and the category. So it's going to be books and a parameter which we'll name ID. We'll take a request and response object as the callback. I'll log getting one book. I'm going to use the find one method from Mongoose. So here I can pass in key value pair of what I'm looking for. So I'm going to match up with the underscore ID. Again, the underscore ID is what we just talked about. It is right here, right? So I'm going to pass in this, right? And I'm not going to hard code it. I'm going to use body parser by saying request.params.id, right? So this ID is this ID, right? We're just passing it in. And then just like above, I'm going to execute it with a callback function that takes an error and the book that we get back. So if there's an error, I'll respond with the, an error. Otherwise, we're going to get back our book and we'll log the fact that we got it back. And I'll print just a JSON indicating that we got our book back. Okay, so now I save this new route. Now I'm going to restart my node application. It's listening on port 8080. Now I should be able to copy and paste this in right here. And it's working. So I put into the URL the ID of the book that we're looking for and I got back the book. So now you should have a better idea of how to set up Mongoose with Node.js, how to create some routes, and how to get back data from your MongoDB database. So far, we've looked at how to find all our books and how to find a single book from our collection. In this video, we'll see how you can post or add a book to our database, update a book, and delete a book. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to use Body Parser. So we're currently using Body Parser to get elements from the parameters, but in order to use Body Parser, and parse JSON or URLs, we need to explicitly state that that's how we want to use Body Parser. So, Body Parser.json will allow us to parse JSON elements. URL encoded will allow us to give and receive body elements through the URL so that we'll be able to use this with Postman. So as mentioned in this example we are going to be using Postman and Postman you can find right here it's a Chrome extension add-on and it allows us to uh, do post put get deletes to our API routes. And with Postman, I can do a get call to the books route that we created. And when sending a get request, I can get back all of the books that I've submitted to our database. So in these upcoming examples, we'll be using Postman and I'll be using the post and delete methods in order to add new books, update books and delete books. So in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways that we can add a post route. So the first way is what you'll probably find more often. 
we'll start off with our standard route that we want to use. So we're going to still be using our book route, but we're just going to be posting to this route instead of getting on the route. And we'll pass in our request and response objects. So there's two different patterns that you tend to see in examples. The first one is that we can use the create method. So Mongoose has a create method that we can see right here. So we could say book.create and then pass in the body of what we want to create uh, with a callback. And we'll actually be looking at this as our second example since it's not used as often. What you'll what you'll see used more often is we'll define a variable which references our schema. So we'll say new book equals a new book schema. So now I'm able to explicitly attach our book fields to body elements that we can define. So within our book schema, we have a title, we have an author, and we have a category. So I'm going to define those. We'll have a title, an author, and a category. So this will be request.body.title, request.body.author, and request.body.category. So these refer to the keys that we're going to be passing in when we're saving a new book. And the value will obviously be the, the names of the title, the author, and the category. So after passing those in, we will call a save method. And we'll use our standard, if there's an error, we'll pass an error. And if we don't have an error, then we'll log the book that got saved and we will send it back to our front end, or in this case, the postman. So we'll save that and I should see my server getting restarted, which it does. So now what I'm going to do in postman is I'm going to send a post message to our route. So our route is still 8080 slash book and we're going to be using this form URL encoded. Now we will be adding key value pairs here. So we're going to add our title and we'll name it Moby Dick author it's probably Hemingway and category say fishtails so now when I click send if I set up this route correctly as a post route then it should show up right below here okay and it does so it looks like our book got posted and we got back a JSON response and I also logged it so we can see that it gets logged to our console and if that wasn't enough confirmation, we'll, we'll go and hit our books route. And we can see that our book, Moby Dick, got added as a new book. So this is the more predominantly used way of adding or posting to a route. So the other way is just to pass in request.body or the whole thing. And this also works. So we'll make another route and we'll just call this slash book two. And it will also be a post. We'll do our request and response objects. So in this route, we'll use the example where we can say book.create. So create is a method that we found on mongoose right here and we can just pass in the whole body instead of individual pieces of body otherwise we'll look the same we're going to pass in a callback with an error and the book that we added 
If there's an error, we'll display the error. Otherwise, we'll log the book and send a response. So this should work the same way as the previous example. And it looks a little cleaner, it takes up less lines, less space, but it's a little more error prone at the same time. So we'll change this up a little bit and we'll post. And it works just the same. So example two, Hemingway Jr. and Fish Saga get posted. And if I refresh our books.getRoute, we can see that it gets posted also. And we also get it shown in our console. Okay. So now let's see how we can update one of our books. And for this, we'll be using the find one and update method, which can be found right here in our mongoose.js docs. And this is one way to update our model. For this example, we will use our find one and update method inside of a put API call to a book colon ID route. So this will look a lot like our when we're finding one particular book. We're doing the same thing. We're still finding one book, but we're going to be updating it also. So we're going to find our book and update. And we'll pass in what we're looking for. So it's the same as the original find where we'll pass in underscore ID and we'll set it equal to rec.params.id. So again, this ID is this ID. So let's look at the find one and update method. It takes conditions, update, options, and a callback. And below we can see an example of what's being done. Our example will look something like this. The query is what we've already set up. It's the underscore ID. Then we want to set what it is that we're updating. So in this example, they're setting name to Jason Bourne and then we'll have options and a callback. So we'll, we'll actually be using all these in our example. So our query is what we've set up is this right here. Now we're going to set up what we want to update. So just like in the example given to us, we have to pass in set. So what do we want to set? We want to set our title. And what do we want to set our title to? We're just going to say request.body.title. And in this example, I'm only going to do the title, but we could easily pass in the author and category as well. The third parameter is an optional parameter. Now you'll usually see when updating and using this parameter, upsert true being used. And this just let's mongoose know that if the title or whatever it is that we pass in doesn't already exist to insert it and then finally we can use our fourth parameter which is the callback function I'll clean this up just a little bit I'll pass in error and new book here And in this example, I'm just going to pass a status of 204, which will indicate that the book got updated correctly. Okay, so that should fix my syntax. I just need an extra ending curly bracket right here. So now let's test out this route. And to test this out, I'm going to take the ID of one of our books. We'll take this one right here. So currently the title is example. So I want to change that. 
So I'm going to go to book slash the idea of a book. And I'm going to update our title to be, call this example three. And I'm going to send. And we need to change this to a put. I'm going to send it again. Well, it did get updated, but I didn't get the message in Postman yet. So, so instead of status, I'll just send this back. And we'll change this to example four. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it showed up after a little while. So if I change this to example four, it still shows up in my Postman ex as example three. But if we go back and if we check, let's see, now it shows up as example four when we're getting our books. So it is working. And in this last example, I'm going to show you how to delete a book. And for this one, we'll be using find one and remove, which can be found right here in our MongooseJS API. So we'll pass in our conditions, options, and a callback. So just like previously, we will create a new route and pass in the ID of our route. The second parameter is a callback. And then we can say book.find1 and remove. And then just like in the previous example, we'll say underscore ID and set it to our parameters. And in this example, we don't need any options. We can just go straight to the callback. And on delete, we can pass in our callback. If there's an error, we'll respond with the error message. Otherwise, we'll just we'll just log the book and this one will respond with a 204. Save that. Now I'm going to grab the ID again. And we'll go and instead of a put, now we'll be using a delete. So if I send this For some reason I put look, this should be book. Okay, now we get our app listening. And it's the same thing, this, this status method isn't working. But if we reload our books route, then this should be gone. Okay, and it did get deleted. And we can see that it was deleted from our console log also.